Personal Finance Excel Practice Problem. Comprehensive Problem Part Number One, Home Financing. Get ready to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you don't have access to the Excel worksheet, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank sheet. If you do have access, there's three tabs down below, an example tab, a practice tab, and a blank tab. The example tab in essence being an answer key. Let's take a look at it now. We've got the information on the left-hand side. We're gonna use that to do a couple calculations on the right-hand side. One, we're gonna look at the home purchase. We're gonna build the amortization table. We're gonna be building the year by year breakout, summarizing the amortization table. We're gonna construct our balance sheet, which shows where we stand as of a certain point in time. We're gonna construct the income statement. These two financial statements are gonna rely in part on the home information that we calculated and the amortization table and the summary amortization table. We'll calculate the income statement a couple different ways just so we can see kind of a cash flow method on the income statement and the uh, more of an accrual method and discuss a little bit of the pros and cons between those two with regards to our personal income statements. And then we'll put together an estimate for the property insurance that we might be needing. So I'm gonna go back to the left-hand side. We're gonna start off with the first component here on the home. So we got the practice tab. That's gonna have some pre-formatted cells on the right-hand side so you could spend less time formatting the Excel worksheet and just working through the practice problem. The third tab is gonna be the blank tab where we're gonna be focusing on some of that Excel worksheet information. It's a little bit more stuff on the left-hand side that you would have to populate. So we got a lot of data over here, but you can certainly populate this data on the left-hand side and think of it more of as, as a kind of a, a budget kind of tool or practice tool within Excel. Have your data on the left. We're gonna use that data to be building our tables on the right hand side so if you don't have this sheet what i would do is you'd open up a blank sheet i'd select the entire sheet put my base formatting which would be right click and we're going to format the cells i would go to uh, currency brackets get rid of the dollar sign no decimals that's my starting point at least closing this back out then put all the data on the left hand side which basically includes kind of our financial data here so there's quite a bit of it this time because it's more of a comprehensive problem but you could put this data over here reformatting the cells to percentages where needed and then we're going to make a skinny c column and then we're good to go we're going to take that data and we're going to start off with our loan calculation. So what we got here, just a summary, we've got basically our balance sheet type of information. This is stuff that in practice, you might gather together or you might use some kind of software to help you to gather this stuff together, which we might talk about more in future presentations. But note, you might do bookkeeping with like a QuickBooks software or wave accounting or something like that. And we've got the checking account, the savings account, the emergency savings. We also could use other software that would compile this data in terms of the ending balance. It wouldn't really track the, the, the entering of the data, but it can compile the ending balance from financial institutions like banks or like other financial institutions like an E-Trade or something that might have an IRA in it. It won't have the car on it because if you put use software, it's not going to be able to know the value of the car because it's not... Uh, being tracked by the financial institution so you'd have to manually put in manually put in the value of the car that depreciates over time i might discuss that more but we've got the car value on theirs for the two cars we've got the liabilities which would be the loans and these are also things that sometimes the financial software can kind of pick up because they're coming from financial institutions. We'll talk about that more later. We've got the income. We're assuming that we have W-2 income for two individuals or one person that has two W-2 incomes. And so we've got the gross amount and the net amount we'll have to deal with. We've got the expenses that we have listed out. Obviously, the income statement is something that you might use a software like a QuickBooks or an accounting software, a Wave or something like that. We might talk about that more in the future. You could try to use bank feeds to construct this stuff, or you might just kind of build it together from a budgetary standpoint. We've got the home purchase information. We're going to say the home price was the 306. This is where we're going to start now. The rate was the 5%, years 30, down payment. It's going to be 20%. 
and then the current value of the home we're going to say is at the 125 so it's going up since the pur purchase time the estimated value of appliances furniture clothing and household items 21,000 jewelry valued at the 2000 so that's what we have now i'm going to focus here i'm going to put my cursor on these items i'm going to right click and make that let's make it green to focus our eyeballs on it as we go through the calculations so we're going to do our standard kind of loan calculation i want to get the amortization table and i want to break the amortization table out by year because that will help me with some of my calculations and putting together the financial statements so we did this in a prior section let's just redo the calculation you might get an amortization table from the the loan provider you can look up online for the amortization tables but if you could put that data into your worksheet it could be a useful tool to help you with your with your financials and your budgeting stuff so let's do that again i'm going to say this is the loan payment the loan payment calculation i'm going to select these two items i'm going to go up top we're going to do our our formatting for a header font group we'll make that black and white black and white and so this is going to be the home price so i'm going to say home price price and this is going to be equal to and if the home was priced down here at the 306 200 there is that we're going to say the down payment the down payment that payment down is 20 percent down payment percent is going to be equal to i'm drawing all this information from the data to the left so that you can change the data to the left and it'll change the rest of your information that needs to be a percent now so i'm going to go to the home tab numbers percentify it i'm going to underline it font group under laminify it and then we're going to say this is going to be the down payment then it's going to be equal to the 306 200 times the 20 percent so if we're putting 61 240 down then we're going to have to finance or the loan amount at the start is going to be the difference it's going to be equal to the 306 200 minus the 61 2 that's going to be the 244 960 now we'll do our payment calculation this is something if we had already set up the loan we probably have the payment information but let's do that calculation for the payment if i have this information up top we could do the standard payment calculation if we were trying to estimate this we're going to say negative pmt brackets and this is going to be the rate the rate which is going to be i'm going to scroll down and pick that up down here that's going to be the five percent comma actually not comma hold on a sec there's the five percent i'm going to say that divided by 12 because that's a yearly rate and we need a monthly rate and then comma the number of periods is going to be 30. i'm going to pick that from my data down here again 30 and then comma and then the next one is going to be the present value not the home value but the loan value so there is that closing up the brackets and enter so that we've got this amount now i messed up hold on a second you might be saying what did you do you messed it up somehow see this this second item here for the periods i kept the 30 it should be 30 times 12 30 times 12 and so there we should have it there's the 1315 it's rounded because i took the pennies out now we can also do that online or double check it online so i might go into an online tool i'm not trying to promote this particular one but you can you can just search for google search an online tool for the loan calculator i'm going to say it was the loan amount is the 244960 so i'm going to say all right loan amount is the 244960 30 years it was five percent we said and just do the calculation so there's the 1315. That's the same calculation that we got to here. So we can kind of double check our numbers. We can also create the amortization table here, which is great, but I can't really pull any information from this when we try to move that for other calculations for budgets or for, uh, for the calculations of our, of our income statement, depending on how we're gonna do that. So I'm gonna select this one. I'm gonna make it blue and bordered. Let's put some borders around it. Let's make it blue. And we're going to make our amortization table now as we've seen in the past i'll do it fairly quickly because we've seen this in a prior section i'm going to put my cursor up top and we're going to make this skinny item here the skinny row home tab format paint it and i'm just going to put that over here on column f 
Now we're gonna use this amortization table later. So I wanna make the amortization table. I wanna make it broken out by year so I can use that for like our financial statements, which you could also use in a similar way as a budgeting kind of format. So we'll try to tie this out then in a way that could be useful, which is why I think it would be useful to do it in Excel. So I'm gonna say this is gonna be years. I'm basically copying this amortization table so it looks something similar to this, right? I'm gonna put the years included though instead of just the months so I can convert it to a year by year breakout. So then we got the months because it's gonna be in the format of months by month. And then we got the payment. And then we've got the interest. And then we've got the loan, or you might say the principal uh, decrease, decrease. And then, is that what they call it over here? Let's see what they call it just for the, they call it principal and then the Indian balance. So print, I'm gonna say loan decrease. And so this is gonna be the loan balance or so the Indian principal balance. There we go. These three, I'm gonna pull them down. Notice I didn't use the wrap text here. I basically put them on two different lines because I don't want a, a fat uh, one line here. I wanna keep it skinny. But if I needed to make a table from it, you can see that kind of causes the problem. So we will make a, a pivot table from this so you can see that. But if I'm not making a table, I'm gonna pull these down right there. I think using the two cells is good. And then you can kind of hide the fact that there's two cells without making a, a fat one that messes everything else up. That'll mess everything else up. You gotta think about you got to think about everyone else, all the other cells that are involved with this thing, not just be selfish with the cell. So in any case, this is going to be the alignment and center, and this is going to be the font group. We're going to make this black and white, and then I'm going to make the years go down a bit. I'm going to start with the months because we're doing this in months. So I'm just going to say 0, 1, 2, 30 year loan times 12, 360. 30 times 12 is 360. So I'm going to take a 1, 2, and then I'm going to buckle my shoe, and then I'm going to grab the fill handle right there, and I'm going to drag that down. Now that I got my shoe buckled, I can make that journey. I can make that journey all the way down to 360, and my shoe didn't fall off at all because I buckled it at 2. And so we're gonna say this is gonna be home alignment and we'll center that. And then I'm gonna do the years. So I'm gonna put the years here so I can make this into a year by year calculation with a, with a tricky formula. Let's put it down here first. This will be the round up, round up for formula, round up little doggies. So we're gonna say round up because we're gonna round the number up. So I'm gonna take this number. I'm gonna divide it by 12 because there's 12 months in a year. And then I'm gonna say comma, so that should, this number will come up to, you know, something between uh, one, zero and one, which I round up to a whole number, which you gotta put a 0.01, that tells it to round up to the whole unit. So I'm gonna close that up and say enter. I kind of double check it by adding some decimals and say, yeah, round it up to a whole number. And then I can put my cursor on it. I can double click on the fill handle, which I just call a fill button at that point, And it should copy it down. Let's center it here. We're gonna center it. I'm gonna pull it up to, I'm gonna put my cursor on the fill handle and drag it up just to put a zero up top. So that's gonna be zero. And now if I go all the way down, it gives me the years. So it gives me 12, 13s, 12, 14s, 12, 16s. And if I go all the way down, we should end up off the 30 years. There we go. Okay, so then, then what we'll do is I'll go to the loan balance to start things off. And then we're gonna start off the loan at that 244.960. And then we'll do our payment, which we calculated right here. That's gonna be the same all the way down. So this is gonna be equal to the 1315. I'm gonna select F4 on the keyboard, making it absolute, dollar sign before the E and the six. You only need a mixed reference, but an absolute one works. The interest is gonna be equal to the 244.960 times the rate, which is not that 20%, it's way over here in our data set, it's the 5%, but that's the yearly rate. So I'm gonna divide it by uh, 12, divided by 12. So it's gonna be the, this number times the 5% divided by 12. Now this 5% is outside of our table and therefore we want it not to move down when I pull it down. So I'm gonna say F4 on the keyboard. You only need a mixed reference, but an absolute one works. Dollar sign before the B and the 32 and enter. The loan decrease then is gonna be equal to the payment minus the interest. And then the loan balance, if this is the payment and this is went to interest, means it 
it poofs away in a puff of smoke because it's the rent on the purchasing power of the money. The loan's only going to be decreased by the nine to two ninety four. So that's going to be the prior loan balance minus that two nine four. So there we have it. Now I know I don't need any absolute references there because these two are both inside the table I'm working on. So they're not, that's good. They're good to go. I want them to move down as I copy down. So I'm going to select those four, and I can just double click the fill handle which is really a fill button at this point double click the fill button and then we're going to scroll down and you can see there's a change of course between the interest and principal that's what's going to kind of mess us up with our accounting when we put together our financial statements and i'll talk a bit about how that kind of messes us up when we record it and what to do with that and how to think about that a bit i'm going to select this whole thing and make it blue and bordered now select this whole thing and make it border blue border blue Font group, border, and blue looks excellent. Okay, so we can check that to the online tool here and say, does that line up? I can check up a couple lines and say I'm at the end of year one. I should be at the 241, 345, for example. End of year one, 241, 346 about. Looks good. Now I'm going to take this. I'm going to break it out on a year-by-year -year basis, doing it two ways, one with formulas, the second with a pivot table because that's what I'm going to use to do my financial statements and whatnot. I need a skinny M column to do this. So I'm going to put my cursor in the skinny F and go to the home tab, clipboard, format, paint, and make that skinny M, same skinny size. And then I'm going to take the headers up top, just going to copy those headers, control C, put that in N, and there it is. I don't need the months though because we're not talking months this time. So I'm going to put my cursor on column O, right click and I'm just going to delete the whole thing and I'll make the years a bit more skinny skinnerizing them they've been skinnerized and then we're going to say this is going to be one we'll say one two three now I'm going to take those three and I'm just going to put my cursor on the fill handle and drag it down not too far this time just going down to 30 we're not going all the way down I didn't even buckle my shoes this time because we're just going down to 30 do that barefoot you can do that barefoot so i'm going to go then we're going to go to the home tab we're going to go then to the alignment and center it so now i want to sum up the payments so i can do this i could sum up the payments here so i'm going to do that calculation with the sum if calculation so i'm going to say this equals the sum if now you can use either of these i think the sum ifs is more versatile so you might try to get used to using the sum ifs which is just a it's just a little bit different format now it has the sum range first so the sum range i want to sum up everything in this column if there's like a one next to it so i'm going to say i want this whole column i'm just going to select the whole column pick it up that whole column and then i'm going to say and i probably should stop it at the end of the table but this goes down forever so i'm just going to take the whole column and then comma and then the criteria range is this range meaning i want you to look for a one in that range and if you have a one in that range i want you to include that in the sum stuff that we're summing and then comma and then the criteria is this one so if you find that one in that range then i want you to sum up the related number in the payment range you got it excel you got it and there it is 15 let's do it a couple more times this equals the sum if and then we'll we'll copy the formulas across some ifs i'm going to use the sum ifs with an s this time the sum range is once again this range so i'm sorry it's this range interest we're looking at interest the interest column and then comma and then the criteria range is this range we're saying hey if you find a one in that range then i want you to sum the related interest column related to it comma and there's the one so we're saying that's the criteria. If you find that in the criteria range right there, I want you to sum up the related number in the sum if function. Let's do it one more time. We're gonna do it over here. The sum ifs with an S. The sum range. This time it's gonna be the loan items and then comma. And then we're gonna say the criteria range is still the years. And then the comma, the criteria is one. So if you see that one, that's the criteria. Then you find that in the criteria range over here and you sum up the related number and the loan decrease range and it does it for us now i'd like to be able to copy that across so what i'm going to do is delete these two 
and I'm going to go to this first one again and say, can I do some mixed reference stuff so I can just copy it across a little bit more easily? The sum range, that's going to be this one. I want that to move, so I'm not going to do anything to it. The interest item, uh, the, I'm, this one is the this one is the criteria range. I, I, I don't want that one to move, so I'm going to say F4 on the keyboard, making it absolute. And this one is the actual criteria. I want it to be able to move down number wise, but but not to move to the right. So I'm going to put a dollar sign before the N, making it mixed, make it a mixed reference. Then I can copy this to the right to get to the same numbers. I'm not going to go to the loan balance because it's a little different. And so there it is. And then I'm just going to select those three and hit the double click on the fill handle or the fill button, fill button little bit different calculation for the last one because I want to find the ending balance like right there. So there's the ending balance. So I got to use the min form formula. So equals to min if. And then we have the ifs. Min ifs and then the range. This is the min range, the loan balance. And then comma, the criteria range. I'm sorry, the, the min range. And then the criteria range is this one. That's right. And then comma, the criteria is the one. So we're saying if you find that one in this range, we want you to sum or take the min of the amount over here in this range. So we hit OK. So it takes the, the min balance right there at the end of the first year. Put my cursor on that one. I'm going to double click the fill handle button and then it copies it down. We might want to total this up, copy it down, total up equals the sum of these items totaling it up total it totally do you want it totaled i totally want it totaled total it then it should totally be totaled i'm going to sum these i'm going to put some underlines some fancy formatting select all this stuff and make that border blue so you might say there's an easier way to do that. We could try to pivot table. Let's do the same thing because I got a well formatted table over here. I can't use the header because I got these two rows, but I could just use this header right there and just copy the whole thing. I could do a pivot table and do the whole thing. Just way easy, way easy. So I'm going to select this whole thing and I'll do it one more time and we'll do it pivot table, pivot table style this time. And I'll put that right underneath right here. So I'm going to go insert pivot table, insert the pivot table. I'm going to put my cursor on existing worksheet and I want to put it right there. There's where it's going to go right underneath the other one and okay. Pivot table. So all I got to do on the pivot table is I'm going to pull the years down. It tries to put them in the sum because it's a number, but I want to put it over here in the rows. So it gives me the rows and then I'm not going to take the months, but I just want the payment, the interest, the decrease and the balance. And there it is, it basically does it just right there for us. I just need to format it now. So I'm gonna hit the drop downs here. You could do this up here. You could hit like right click on the cell up top. And then you wanna go to, to the pivot table options. And hold on a second. I'm gonna go to the cell up top and I'm gonna go to the value settings. The value settings, which you can also do here, hitting the drop down and then go to the value field settings or right click and go to the value field settings. It's in the sum area, so that's what I want. I'm gonna to go to the number format now and I'm gonna make them currency, bracketed, remove the dollar sign, decimal down, down, and okay. And okay, I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna say, I'm not trying to format the cells here. What I'm trying to, I wanna do it down here, value field settings, it's different. So the sum is what we want number formatting it's going to be the currency brackets dollar sign gone decimal down down let's do it again okay okay right click i'm going to say value field settings we're going to say this is going to be the sum that looks good currency brackets dollar sign gone decimal down down okay okay the last one's a little bit different so i'm going to right click this one value field settings this time I don't want it to sum. I want it to take the min, the min. And then the number formatting, this part's the same. Currency, brackets, dollar sign gone, decimal down, down, and okay. And okay, so you could adjust the labels if you wanted to. 
at this point, but I'm going to leave them as is. They also made the cells a little bit fat, so we're going to skinnerize the cell. It fattened up the cells. We're going to skinnerize the cells. So we're going to put our cursor from N to R. This is this is how diets should work when you skinnerize your belly. They should you just select them and then you just drag it like that. And before we wrap this up, note that it, we took we left out one last month down here. So if I scroll all the way down, <laughs> you'll note we missed the last payment. So if I scroll all the way down here, we stopped it at at uh, three sixty three fifty nine. So I'm going to actually add one more payment. And so there we have it. So that takes it down to zero. So if I go back up, that will affect this last month down here. The last month is now at zero. And, and the pivot table, notice, didn't refresh automatically. So you got to right click on it and refresh the pivot table. And then it'll pick up. So I'm going to go on the pivot table here. We're going to go into the pivot table analysis. And then in the data group, We've got the change the data source. So if I click on this item, you can see that it goes down all the way down here, but it leaves out that last row. So it's stopping at the 362. So I could reset the whole thing, or I could just say I want that to go down to 363. And then OK. And then if I go back up top again, we could check it out. We could check it out and see what we have here. So now it's refreshed and going down to zero. Now I'm going to skinify these rows again, making them a little bit more skinny. And so there we have those. And so it has now been adjusted. This is future me talking to you from a future point in the problem here, noting that we stopped this at the 359 instead of going down to the 360. So we left off that last payment, which is going to cause us a problem when we convert it to the pivot tables and we'll fix it at the end of the practice problem. So you can either include that last payment, which will take your amortization down to zero, which is usually the indication that we have done it properly, or you can you can keep it at the 359 if you so choose and we'll see it when we have a problem with the pivot table and we'll use that to kind of refresh our pivot table at a future point.